How long does it take to get to Mars? When people think of outer space, they usually envision astronauts or rockets suspended in zero gravity. And if you were to think about planets the same way, you might imagine to get to Mars, we just have to go in a straight line. However, this is not the case. In this video, I'll be going over, well, how long it takes to get to Mars, as well as why it takes so long. So let's talk about that. How long does it take to get to Mars? The quick answer for this question is it typically takes anywhere from six to eight months for a spacecraft to get from Earth to the red planet. But why does it take so long? And in order to understand this question, we must first take a look at the planets themselves and how we can use a trajectory to go from one to the other. Now, the first thing you may imagine, and as I mentioned previously, is just going in a straight line from Earth to Mars, as if these two planets were just beach balls in a swimming pool and you were to swim in between the two. However, this is an awful representation of what is actually going on in space. And people typically say the main reason why it takes a long time to get to Mars is because it's far away from us. And yes, Mars is far away from us, but in reality, we can't just go in a straight line to Mars. It's possible, but it's not fuel efficient. But why? If we take a look at Earth and Mars, they are both orbiting around the sun, meaning that their general motion, or well, their orbit, is depicted by the solar acceleration, or the forces applied by the sun. Now, most of that doesn't really matter, but essentially all you need to know is that these two objects are constantly moving around the sun, and they're actually moving at different rates, meaning that the Earth is going around the sun faster than Mars is. Because of this, the distance between Earth and Mars is also constantly changing. Therefore, you have to take that into consideration as well. But again, I said, we don't really want to go in a straight line. So what's the answer? It turns out that there are many different trajectories that can take you from Earth to Mars. And essentially, each one of these trajectories is a part of an orbit that is around the Sun. Now, the different trajectories can vary depending on where Earth and Mars are in their corresponding orbits. So, how do engineers actually choose which trajectory to take? And there are many different factors that can be contributed into this decision, including aspects such as when is the launch date going to be? How much does our spacecraft weigh? How much time do we want to spend going from Earth to Mars? As well as how much fuel do we want to use? All these are very important questions when designing the mission. So how do they balance them correctly? Typically, engineers want to find one of the most fuel efficient ways possible in order to get to Mars. And this is typically referred to as a Hohmann transfer orbit. This was developed in the early 20th century, this Hohmann transfer idea, where essentially it's the most fuel efficient way to get from one circular orbit to another circular orbit in the Keplerian model. But that's a lot of words just to basically say it's the most fuel efficient way to get from Earth to Mars. And in this case, where we're going from Earth to Mars, it usually takes about eight and a half months to get there. But why is it eight and a half months and not six to eight? As I mentioned before, depending on how much fuel you have, how much your spacecraft weighs, as well as when you actually launch your spacecraft, depends on which trajectory you choose. So you might actually not be choosing the most fuel efficient one. In addition, in reality, both Earth and Mars aren't necessarily in perfectly circular orbits, which is important for the home and transfer. Therefore, there are a lot of different things that come into play when designing actual missions. But the main idea is that the engineers are leveraging the forces applied from the sun to get us to Mars, which is very fascinating to think about. To put this into perspective, the most recent mission that NASA has launched to Mars took around six months to get there. And the Curiosity rover, or the last rover that they sent to Mars, took around eight months. So then again, it falls in the six to eight month range that we typically see. But remember, these arcs are also dependent on where Earth and Mars are in their corresponding orbits. So it turns out in order for it to be the most efficient, they have to be in the perfect alignment. That is why we end up seeing a lot of Mars missions being launched within the month time frame that happens. And this is actually going to occur next July. So next July, there's going to be many launches of Mars missions, which will be very interesting to see. However, it's going to take each one of them anywhere from six to eight months to get there. So this may lead you to a question of, can we get there faster? Six months is just too long. 
And the answer to that is, yeah. Using liquid rocket engines as well as liquid rocket fuel, if we're willing to use more fuel on the spacecraft, then we can get there a lot faster than six months, probably closer to four months if even possible. However, the main issue is the quicker we get there with a restraint sized rocket means we're going to have to take more mass away from the spacecraft, which means maybe every couple days we want to get there sooner, we're going to have to take an instrument off of the actual scientific experiment. That is why sending robotic missions isn't that big of an issue in terms of time. Because if we're willing to wait a couple more weeks but add another major aspect to the mission itself, then it's worth it. However, the big question arises when we start sending people. Because a six to eight month mission sending people in interplanetary space could be very dangerous. So that's just going to be something we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Now it turns out that there are actually some concepts that could get us to Mars in less than two months. And these are being researched at NASA centers as well as universities all across the globe. Essentially, they're trying to take a look at how we can use ion propulsion as well as nuclear power to give us a low thrust technique, essentially constantly accelerating the spacecraft on its way to Mars. Now that sounds really cool and super futuristic, but I doubt we're going to see that in the near future, just because all of these are still just being developed in research centers. But with all that being said, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.